So let's just say there's a snake. There's two different ones. You put a snake in front of them. Yeah. Both of them are going to be like, ah. Yeah. But one of them is going to be like in their head, like, ah. It's not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. Um. <clears throat> What's going on? Welcome back to the Cole Connor Podcast. Today, I'm here with the wonderful Anna Clapper. <laughs> thanks for having me. Hi. Yes, thanks for coming <laughs> on. How are you doing? How are you? How are you doing with this whole craziness going on of 2020? Let's just it's, we kind of caught up for a second off camera, but let's just get into it a little bit. Um, I'm coping, I think, about as well as everybody else. Yeah. Um, it's been difficult. I'm a raging extrovert, so... Um, really? That's interesting. Yeah. So okay. I really I really like to be around people. Like, my whole job is to be around people mm-hmm. and entertain people and um, make connections and stuff. So it's been difficult, like, especially not being around, like, my dive buddies. Mm. Um, well, I guess we have, we have to stop there then because we have to talk about what you do. So, oh, yeah, yeah, that would help yeah, probably. Yeah, okay. I think we have, to, we have to context it. So <laughs> tell the people what you do because I feel like you can explain it way better than me. <laughs> so um, I own an aquatics business called Deep Blue Aquatics. Mm-hmm. My business kind of has two sides. One of them is aquatic safety training. So lifeguard certifications, first aid CPR, swim lessons, um, scuba and free diving instruction. And then the other side of the business is aquatic performance. So I am Columbia's only professional uh, mermaid and aquatic performer. So I travel all over and well, normally travel all over (laughs) um, and, you know, perform. I have have my own performance tank that I can take to events and things. But I also work with a larger company out of D.C. Mm -hmm. that has I think she's got like four different tanks. So, um, yeah. Okay, so first off, I've never met anyone that does anything like that, and that's really. I know, you said you're Colum- or you said Columbia's or South Carolina's? Columbia's. Columbia's. Yeah, there are a couple of other mermaids in South Carolina, but I'm really the only one who travels. Yeah, that's yeah. that's really interesting. I mean, <laughs> what got you into that in general? And I do want to talk about business a little bit too, because it. I mean, that's just like a really creative thing to do. But then also there's a business aspect to everything, obviously, if mm-hmm. you're trying to like survive off of it. But first, like, how did you get into that? Um, that's kind of a long story. No, but I I'll, try, <laughs> I'll try to make it as succinct yeah. as possible. But um, so my background is actually in behavioral neuroscience. Um, wow. I was a lab rat. I worked um, in research for... I guess six years, so four as an undergrad, and then two after I graduated. Um, and it was fun. It was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, applied to grad school, and turns out nobody funds behavioral research anymore. <laughs> so, um, well, that- wait, okay. so what is what is behavioral behavioral neuroscience? Uh, so basically, I used a rodent model of behavior and studied their behaviors and in hopes of being able to translate that into like human behavior. And then coupled with that, I looked at um, brain functions and like specific areas of the brain that were activated and like in basically bridging behavior and microbiology, essentially just like bridging that, but Mm -hmm. specifically with the brain or psychology what is an example so because this is completely like over my head i don't know about any of this stuff so what like what, what is an example of like your what kind of behavior are you trying to change so the um the stuff that i studied during my undergrad mm-hmm. my senior thesis so i was in the honors college at usc mm-hmm. um so i had to do like a science project for my essentially like glorified yeah. science fair. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I, uh, I had to do a thesis project. Mm-hmm. And so what I was working on, I actually worked with a rodent model of social bonding, aka monogamy. Um, so we okay. had a couple different species of this rodent um, that were, um, they would, in the wild, obviously lab yeah. settings a little bit different, mm-hmm. um, but in the wild, this specific species of rodent would mate with a partner for Mm -hmm. an extended period of time so basically more than one offspring generation um and 
they would stay and raise the pump pups together so like by parental care is the term for that so essentially they'd like hmm. make this little family and yeah. like raise the, the their little <laughs> did you name you know, them pups did they have names i did not okay. that's that that's is rookie bad. mistake number one yeah, never named sorry. a lot of animals um <laughs> i would have messed up that <laughs> yeah it gets it gets animal studies get old kind of fast if yeah. you're not prepared for them I but um that. so i compared that to another species of the same like genus of rodent mm -hmm. um that doesn't do by parental care and you know okay elongated mating so i called them basically <laughs> layman's terms yeah. we like, had uh, we had we term. had a promiscuous rodent okay. and then we had a monogamous rodent Got it. Okay. um but i wasn't really looking at the i wasn't looking at those relationships from like a monogamy or prom promiscuity aspect i was mm -hmm. looking at do these animals create a bond right so okay. i was specifically looking at the bond that they create with this other animal because mm -hmm. normally if you put a, a rodent um you know in an environment where mm -hmm. there's something new a novel object a novel animal mm -hmm. they're going to prefer that um, because mm -hmm. new is usually interesting yeah, and cool yeah. and, and you know i mean we talk if you're in aquariums or anything you do mm -hmm. you know the zoo puts enrichment items in there because everybody likes something new yeah right? that's true um sure we tend sense. to seek out new things mm -hmm. but um what i was looking at is do these rodents prefer this animal that they've created a bond with mm -hmm. um so that's do so they prefer their mated partner over a novel animal mm -hmm. um and then i translated that further mm -hmm. um for my thesis and looked at whether or not that that, that bond that they created mm -hmm. um, lessened their response to a stressor. So okay. Okay. I stressed these mice out and um, then studied their behavior. So, so you're trying to see if the mouse that is has more of a bond is more stressed out by certain things, kind of. Um, the ideal scenario would mm -hmm. be that they would be less stressed out. So okay. having essentially their partner present Got it. would Got it. alleviate some of that stress. Okay. Um, and it was really cool. So uh, behaviorally, there was really no difference like mm -hmm. in studying the behaviors and scoring the behaviors. But mm -hmm. um, hormonally, there was a big difference. So their stress hormone levels didn't go up as mm -hmm. much as the other animals when they were exposed to the same conditions. Um, so like, or I'm trying to map this out in my head too so you're saying that if it's like, hard to explain like six years of research in yeah like a, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like two imagine. minutes unless, yeah. unless we want this whole podcast to yeah. be like I could, I could already, my brain's already spinning i'm like wow that's interesting <laughs> so let's just say there's a snake there's two different ones you put a snake in front of them yeah both of them are going to be like ah yeah but one of them is going to be like in their head like ah that sounds bad <laughs> yeah <laughs> or i mean like, it's, like, it's like it's still stressful but it's they're you're saying their stress hormones are lower because they had a partner yeah so the change okay. in their stress hormones um was was not as great as like the promiscuous animal being in that situation with another mouse right because mm. they're so for example the the animals that were monogamous mm -hmm. or that ha had created this social bond mm -hmm. um when I introduced this smelly piece of ferret towel, so ferrets mm -hmm. are natural predators for them in the wild. So that's Got how it. I was like spooking them and, cre and freaking them out. Stress. Um, I put this little piece of cloth in there that smelled like ferret. Mm -hmm. So they kind of freaked out for a little bit, but the monogamous animals would eventually kind of like huddle together and mm -hmm. just like try to hide and mm -hmm. freeze. Um, the promiscuous animals had a tendency to just like jump up and down in the corner like get me out of here like i can't be responsible i, I need to get away like there's this other animal like you can have that animal like mm -hmm. i need to get out you know that yeah. kind of situation of course i'm like putting so, yeah no, i'm sure yeah you're I'm, I'm, like <laughs> anthropomorphizing <laughs> yeah. the the mice because they, they aren't actually yeah. thinking these things <laughs> yeah. but um <laughs> but that's in general like, yeah. kind of the process that okay wait then, i'm sorry so how does this translate to a human or like what was the was the point to just prove that or was the point to just see what would happen or was it to translate it to a human well so the point the 
overall goal eventually would have been to translate it to humans. Mm -hmm. So you think about like um, when people go to therapy, like does one-on-one therapy work better for some demographic of the population? Mm -hmm. Does group therapy work better for another demographic of the population? Is Mm -hmm. it better for someone to have a therapist or is it better for someone to you know, have a really good partner in their life or just another like person who is a support system for them, but not necessarily, um, you know, maybe not a professional, right? So um, it's, and does having, you know, that person there increase their stress or decrease their stress? And um, Mm. for me, where I saw this research going was really just having um, some insight into you know, diversifying um, treatments for stress and how Mm -hmm. do we alleviate stress as humans and, you know, things that help one person may not help another Mm -hmm. um, and all of that. God, yeah, that really could be a whole podcast. What's up? (laughs) Um, It's, I mean, in itself, that's just so interesting to me. I've been listening to some podcasts on um, neuro, I mean, I think it's neuroscience. Yeah. Um, And like, like dopamine and yeah, stuff. It's same. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's the same stuff. Oh my god! And one of the things I found so interesting because I'm I'm in a stage right now where I'm trying to be like my best optimal. Like how can I be my best self in right, every way? Yeah. Like how can I wake up when I need to wake up? How can I eat what I need to eat and work out when I need to work out? Mm-hmm. Because I think it's possible. I'm just like something in my head is like holding me back, and yeah. it's frustrating. Yeah. So it's it was interesting to me to learn about some of these tendencies that we have i can't even it was so much packed into a couple podcasts that i can't even like i probably remember like three things but it's still it's just it's really interesting yeah. so i can imagine that was like a pretty intense but cool subject yeah Man. it was really cool and yeah. i mean like i how many times when you're like working in a field i don't know if you've ever like done an office job or something have, but yeah, like yeah. you know part of the job is commiserating with your coworkers, right it's yeah. like that water cooler moment yes. where you're all like you know i don't know if i can cuss on this podcast yeah, but like, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you're are... you're taking this you know moment to just like bitch about all of your stuff and vent yeah. and yes. you know ha- like having other people there mm-hmm. for a lot of us alleviates that stress that's so true and that goes back to dealing with covid and like 2020 (laughs) like all this other stuff me being the extrovert like having people who um you know in my field who are feeling the same things i'm feeling and Mm -hmm. like you know we're all stressed out and i'm not able to do and be my best self because my best self is in the water and there's mm-hmm. no water here except for like murky which is not really fun yeah, yeah. um which i mean it's important you're right it's important yeah. to get those feelings out yeah and i think that's actually a great point about covid in general is what it has done we're all we're all inside and we're depending on social media yeah i guess in a lot of ways in a lot of ways yeah yeah it's it's different. See, I haven't felt super affected by that because I'm I'm an introvert actually. I'm oh, an, really? Yeah, I, I'm technically an extroverted introvert. Oh, yeah. Where like I can do stuff like this and I can be like on and everything, mm-hmm. but like after a couple hours, I'm like, oof, I need to yeah. go like recharge. Yeah. Um, so like it, I didn't affect me as much in that way, but I do notice as I, it's just things start to kind of slowly go back to normal that I'm like, wow, I missed this. Yeah. Like I really did. Yeah. I missed sitting at a restaurant and seeing people like walk by cl- yeah, I don't know. Just, yeah that human connection yeah yeah very important that you you kind of forget sometimes or i forget some if i'm like mm-hmm. zoned out and i mean most people are so like you're selfish you're thinking about yourself most of the time and you're just kind of like i'm working and i'm doing all these things but then covid made you be like oh, okay yeah i'm lonely yeah <laughs> i'm sad <I> know. <laughs> or, or whatever yeah. it is i mean that's yeah. it's, it's a super real thing anyways we got totally off subject so you were explaining what you do that was where we were oh yeah it's like full circle back there <laughs> oh yeah so um so yeah background in behavioral neuroscience yes um there was no funding for behavioral research at that time. Um, there mm. are like 10 people in the U.S. who work with that rodent model. That's insane. So, yeah, I know. I and think none, there'd be of, more. none of them had money. So, yeah, wow. um, <laughs> so grad school was kind of off the table. And like I had always 
in the back of my brain just been like oh you know if stuff doesn't work out i'll just go be a mermaid Mm because um i grew up in the dive industry my dad's a dive instructor um Uh, he's like a law enforcement dive instructor so mm -hmm. so you've um, been around water i've been around water a lot Mm -hmm. um and then my maternal grandfather was also a dive instructor Mm -hmm. and i'm i'm a south carolina native i'm from um little marion um Mm -hmm. over towards myrtle beach Yeah. yeah so um I grew up around water and all of that, and Mm. it was always a part of my life. And so I just, you know, jokingly to myself, would always be, you know, I'd be sitting in like the guard chair at um, Strom or something, Mm -hmm. like working Mm -hmm. while I should be studying for a test and thinking like, well, if this doesn't work out, I'll just go be a mermaid. Like, that'll be fun. Yeah, so it's Um, almost a joke at that point. It was "Hmm." a joke Mm -hmm. until I didn't get into grad school for the second time um, because no money mm. so so how does that work here so you, you wanted to go to grad school for a specific thing but there's just, just yeah. kind of like shutting it down or something they're just that's not an option yeah so okay. um the way grad school works at least for like um i'm a science. college dropout so i just don't know <laughs> <I'm close laughs> well to, the way so. graduate school works for for a lot of different fields especially in the scientific industry so mm-hmm. um you know if you're going into research or something like that um you apply to the school mm-hmm after you have reached out to specific um they're called primary investigators but specific professors that you want to work with and so you have to essentially network with these people that you've never met Mm -hmm. um and who have no idea what you do and that (laughs) you're you know a really nice smart person and Mm -hmm. you have to like cold call these people email them and say hey i've read your research and this is something i'd like to do and then if they have money they'll encourage you to apply to the university that they work with and essentially like vie for your application and vouch Mm -hmm. for you and Mm -hmm. say yeah i want this person or Mm -hmm. they don't have money for you and even if you apply then you're not gonna get accepted because no one can yeah, pull that funny. yeah because a lot of the funding Dang. is dependent upon individual labs applying for funding mm-hmm. so wow did not know that yeah, okay so they did not have yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean especially after spending so much time on it but i'm I, sounds like it mm-hmm. taught you a lot in general oh yeah and led you to where you are which yeah it did special. it did and i yeah. use psychology in my everyday life so yeah yeah so, like, psychology <laughs> is, is so insane i i love the idea of just you're just watching someone and they're their tics and their mannerisms and mm-hmm. even i'm an observer so i just love to like watch people talking to them yeah. and just like think about what's going yeah. on yeah and then you understand yourself so much better too which is you really do yeah, yeah. it's super important anyways continue <laughs> so yeah um i i don't know if you're familiar with wiki watchy down in florida it's mm-hmm. like this um so it's a a Florida State Park now. Okay. Um, when it first opened in 1947, um, it was just this like underwater performance theater. So think wow. like Broadway underwater. That's cool. Um, and these girls perform. Uh, well, they're not just girls. They are guys too. But okay. these <laughs> these people perform <laughs> um, for underwater, and you know they they breathe off of uh, compressed air, but they use like this special hookah system and it looks really cool. magical it's really cool yeah um i have been slightly obsessed with them since i was like a I preteen yeah, so awesome. you know growing up in the dive industry like i was like oh yeah, man this is like the magical. dream yeah, yeah it's magic mm-hmm. um and so you know i i had a, a, a dance background like i danced growing up and mm-hmm. i was like this would be the perfect job for me like yeah, yeah i can <laughs> use all of my skills and stuff so i actually mm-hmm. after i got rejected from grad school the second time mm-hmm. Drove down there, auditioned the day of, um, got offered a position, and they told me they pay their girls ten dollars an hour, and I was like, huh, "You're funny." <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I'm sorry, but I cannot move down here on a lab on tech ten, salary yeah. for ten bucks an hour, yeah. like in the middle of nowhere, Florida. Yeah, um, That's so, <laughs> so I decided to build a business here, um, and there was literally no one doing that here. Mm-hmm. Um, there are, like I said like two other professional mermaids in South Carolina mm-hmm. and they don't really travel. Mm-hmm. Um, and I saw a hole in the market and I was like, all right, we're going to make this work. So um, That's amazing. then Deep Blue Aquatics was born. So, okay. Yeah. How do you get the word out about this? Because I mean, any business is hard to get the word out about, uh, yeah. honestly, um, especially starting. How old were you when you started? Like, what? I was, how old am I now? I'm 28 now. Uh I was like 25. Yeah. 25. So yeah. it's like three years gone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially a younger person. So you're coming into a, a new market with mm-hmm. a 
new type of business oh, yeah. and you're younger. Yeah. And so people immediately judge you for that. Mm -hmm. How has that been? Because <laughs> I have I know some of the struggle a little bit. Yeah, it, um, it's um, it been hard, but I think uh, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I think the way I have my business set up um, has really been beneficial. So awesome. like I said, I have the safety training side. Mm -hmm. That's super easy to market. Like I can market that. That's smart. Yeah. I have connections with all of the aquatics facilities in town because mm -hmm. I've been a lifeguard for like 10 Oof, years. I used yeah. to work for the university. Um, you know, I got I got all of these connections already in mm -hmm. terms of that side of the business. Um, and that income allowed me to invest in all the mermaid stuff I needed and all the marketing that I needed to do for that. Um, so wow. really my only overhead for a lot of my business is just website management and marketing, mm -hmm. um, a lot of social media. How do you go about doing that? Cause I, I connected with you or you connected with me, I don't know, through social media. Yeah. And I feel so strongly about social media and it's such a powerful tool. And especially if you're just being like open and honest about stuff, I feel like people connect with you and then, yeah. um, especially in, Okay, Columbia, like I know there's people, there's lots of cool people doing lots of cool things, but when you like really take social media seriously and someone, you see someone else that's doing it seriously too, it's like, mm -hmm. oh wow, that's awesome. Like it's yeah. like a immediate connection. Yeah. So how has that been for you? Just like building the, the marketing aspect? Um, I don't know. I see social media as a really good tool, but mm. I'm feeling slightly jaded by it this year, um, mainly because I just can't create content. Mm. Um. Being that I'm an aquatics business, mm -hmm. most of my content and my engagement is driven by underwater photos. Yeah. And so it's been really hard uh, this year because, like, I don't have a pool in my backyard. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, yeah. it's, it's been difficult. All the pools are still closed. But That's what's going to ask. They're all closed. Okay. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Um, the the pool that I usually train at is a city facility. Um, mm -hmm. And they're still they're still closed. They're not allowing anybody. And I don't want to pay for my, a Y membership that I have to drive 30 minutes to use, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I get that. Um, yeah. But in general, like social media is really cool. I've met a lot of really awesome people through social media. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's hard. Mm -hmm. Like, I, and I, it is hard. you know, we've yeah. talked about me being a raging extrovert. And, mm -hmm. but like, I do so much better when I'm talking to people face to face. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, interviews and and face-to-face -face marketing is really that's my strong suit yeah um what's the what's the difference in your opinion like for you what makes it easier to be in person versus on social media i don't i don't know mm -hmm. i'm really good at, uh we talked about like reading people mm -hmm. and like watching people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i feel like i'm pretty good at like getting a read on somebody yeah and just that whole body language aspect like nuanced mm -hmm. stuff um is just so much easier for me yeah than social media like i just and i never know like what version of myself i feel like posting that day <laughs> right like yeah, if i'm having yeah. a crap day like do i really want to post that and share that with everybody yeah, and a good point, yeah. i've got three different accounts now so mm -hmm. like one for the mermaid stuff one for the you know dive instruction stuff and then mm -hmm. one for my like artistic outlet which is the modeling page yeah. that's how we met yeah, yeah. um and it's just it's a it's a lot to keep up with. Yeah. And on top of that, I manage two or two other accounts, yeah. right? Like I manage the account for the scuba shop, and then I manage I mean, um, lot, USA yeah. Free Diving's account, which mm -hmm. I'm not doing a great job with. It. That's, that's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's hard. I mean, that's five it's accounts hard, right yeah. there. It's I've, just I've had places and been in places where I was managing a lot of accounts and stuff, and yeah. it's. You think that may, or sometimes you're just like, I mean, I do this, it's easy, it's just social yeah, media yeah. posts or whatever, but uh -huh. no, it's draining. It's to really do that. draining. Yeah. yeah. For me, though, the, the part, the hardest part of it has been content creation. Mm -hmm. I just feel really limited in at least, at least this past year, just like I have no pool, I have no, mm -hmm. like, and my, uh, my motivation for creation has gone down, yeah. you know, because I'm not getting that, like, warmth from all my, my friends and yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, know? that's that, that's a real thing. I mean, I know specifically when COVID started, I've heard a lot of people say this, is you think you're going to just like, at least I did, maybe like bunker down and just do yeah, all this yeah. stuff and you have mm -hmm. all this, I don't know, or for, for a second, it's like you had all this time. Right. Um, but then you're life like, kicks yeah, back in. Vacation. <laughs> yeah, vacation. Like, I, you know, yeah. like what, summer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool, yeah. But then it's also like reality hits in. It's like, oh, I have to pay bills still and yeah. I still have, yeah, there's like a lot, there's a lot you have to do. 
But yeah, the motive, it's like the whole world was just kind of like, hmm. Yeah, yeah like it was just like one giant sigh. Yeah, it really, it really yeah. felt like that. So the motivation, I mean, that's a, that's a real thing. Now, do you feel like it's just photos or is it like a video? Are you trying to do more video content too? Or is it mostly photo content that you feel like you're missing? Uh, a little bit of both, really. Yeah, yeah it's just. Just all, all of it. All of it. Yeah. <laughs> just content in general. Yeah, um, I, I totally yeah, get that. So it's just... Well, how about when the season is is solid and on point and everything's how it normally would be? Yeah. What is your favorite part of just doing what you do in general? Mm. Oh, that's hard because I do so many different things, you do, right? Yeah. Like I'm all over the place, mm -hmm. um, which is what I I love. I love, I love that, that too like about myself. Yeah, about every it. day is never this. Like mm -hmm. no two days are ever the same. Exactly. Um, and that's why I like the underwater photo stuff too, is because mm -hmm. no image is ever the same. Yeah. Because everything's in fluctuation. Everything's flowing and moving. That's so um, true. But I think I don't know. I really love making divers like mm. certifying divers um my sister did that too. a yeah. couple weeks ago cool and, yeah and it was actually a couple months ago yeah she ran and was just like i want to dive i'm going to take a class you should do one too and i was like yeah i'm going to do it and then she actually did it and i was like ah oh, man yay <laughs> yeah, she good just, for her i mean yeah, if she, she needs a buddy it. let you know yeah, yeah, she, oh my gosh, she, yeah she, would, love she would love any that. excuse to be in the water yeah, yeah she's in one of those um or she's um in the army Oh, and cool. she's in flight school. Oh, wow. And they're doing, actually, I don't know what I'm supposed to say this. Can I say this? I, I really don't know. <laughs> but she's in like a, it's a, a thing where you, it's like hardcore training. It's like 20, oh, yeah, yeah. 21 days. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. in the middle of that right now. So send in some positive vibes. It's cool. Yeah, if she yeah. needs some some like breath hold tips or anything for that in water oh, she would love thing that. where yeah. they kick you into the pool with your hands tied or whatever. <laughs> um, just <laughs> just, uh, yeah, just yeah. let me know. My yeah. dad was in the my dad was in the navy, okay. so and he did okay. a lot of that training stuff too. Yeah. So um, I should definitely connect y'all then because she yeah. she was always a, a water a water kid and yeah. it, it was funny. We had a pool when I was like uh, 13, 14, and mm -hmm. as the years went by, my dad would always be like. She would tell my sister, you can go swim if like Cole watches you while you yeah. swim so that you're safe. Yeah. So she'd be like, Cole, will you come watch me swim? And I was like, Ugh, I don't want to watch you Just swim. Just like sit there and watch yeah, her going yeah, in circles. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> hey, look, look, I can hold my breath. I can hold my breath. But looking back, it's so cute. It's like yeah. it's so adorable. Yeah. What's that huge difference there? Three years. Three okay. Years. So That's it's cool. well, not a huge difference, but yeah. it was enough to where I was like in a different stage. Right. Every yeah, time. Stage in your life. But now it's. We're just like really good friends now, which is really awesome. That's good. That's Man, still... It's so nice to have like to be an adult with your siblings. Yeah. Because I have two younger sisters as well. Yep. And um, they're like four and five year difference from me. Okay. Um, cool. And it's just, they're such cool people. Yeah. Now. Like it's just, yeah. and we're all three so different. Yeah. Um, but it's just, they're just cool. Like adults it's, to it, hang out yeah. with. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, it's, it's like you have a built in friend. Yeah. <laughs> it's really. <laughs> It's really nice. Yeah. I always look at her like she's young still, but then every year she's like, yeah, I'm 24. And then I'm like, wait, what? I know. It's, I was just 24 and yeah. you're 24. Yeah. It's so weird. I'm sure you go through a very similar oh, yeah. thing. It's yeah. like I, you just feel immediately old or ancient or like yeah. your siblings will will say something and you're just like, what does that mean? Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, what is TikTok? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Seriously. Going through that oh, state. Yeah. God, that brings up something else is like the, you said you're 28? Yeah. Okay. I'm 27. Yeah, yeah. And this is like a weird stage of life. I feel like. It's weird. Yeah. yeah. It's like a limbo period, right? Very it's much like, so. Yeah. You're not old, but you're not young yeah, yeah it feels like that You're yeah not young. i still feel like i'm 25 mm -hmm. but, you know but but it's you know i didn't really find myself like i guess you know i'm still finding myself of everyone's yeah. a, a work in progress yeah, right but 100%. like i don't i don't know that i really felt like myself and you know really start working on mm -hmm. who i want to be mm -hmm. and who i'm mm -hmm. going to grow into until i was like 25 it like, takes that sometimes. It, yeah. yeah. Everybody's journey is so different. I was probably, I mean, similar. I thought I was finding myself at like Same, 20, right? yeah, like pursuing I know, yeah. music. And I was like, yeah. I mean, I still pursue music, but it was like all my whole life for several years. Yeah. And then so many things happen and then you're just, you're like 25, 26, 27. You're just like, wait, what? Like, who, what am I doing? Like, well, I'm confused. Like, I'm just all of a sudden confused. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny how life is. Yeah. Especially like. So I'm the oldest, mm -hmm. like I said, of, mm -hmm. of three. And um, my parents have been divorced my whole life. And mm -hmm. my mom 
um, basically for the latter half of my like formative years or whatever, when I was mm-hmm. 11, 12, like she divorced her second husband. Oh, like, wow. I don't know if I'm oversharing, please stop me. Um, no, if this is too much, yeah, but, no, no, it's but totally so great. like I help, I helped, you know, like raise great, a family yeah. that, that was the four of us against the world essentially. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I had a lot of responsibility and like the sense of responsibility and expectation, you know, Mm. like I was doing what I was supposed to and, Mm -hmm. you know, trying to, you know, be a doctor or go to grad school and like make this money and like do the things and like get married and settle down and have a house and Mm -hmm. all that other stuff. And and then it's just like, okay, well, I did those things like it didn't change how I feel about myself. Like it's exactly. time, it's time to grow, right? Yes. Like it's time to start start doing what I want mm-hmm. and fulfilling my needs and and less so of true. what I should do and more of what I need to or want to, right? I feel like people like it takes them. Maybe it's a generational thing, yeah. Potentially, but it feels like people go through their whole lives and they don't yeah. think about that and or something. Don't. Yeah, it's crazy, and I feel like it. I mean, I don't know for sure, but it feels like mostly women do that a lot of the time because of like the oppression, all the millions yeah, of things. Yeah, the roles, man. The roles, yeah. Uh, like that's a, that's the thing. <laughs> the that's patriarchy a, keeping you down. Yeah, <laughs> but but seriously, and I yeah. do think things. I my perspective is things are changing. I don't I don't know from yeah. a woman's perspective, but I mean, like, how do you do you feel like that has a role in it, kind of? Or? I think so. Um, especially from like my dad's side of the family, like mm-hmm. they're very traditional, you know, and I. Yeah. I feel like a part of me didn't really know what I wanted to be when I grew up, right? Yeah. So I was kind of floundering, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> fish puns, <laughs> um, but fish I was puns. I was like floundering a little bit mm-hmm. and, you know, trying to figure out what life was going to be like after graduation and, um, you know, whether or not I really wanted to go to grad school mm-hmm. and what I wanted to do and um, what was going to f- fulfill me, right? Yeah. Like that big job that you can willingly work for 50 years or whatever mm-hmm. that, you know, your grandparents talk to you about. It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of one pressure. Job. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, like having something solid to like grab onto is like, okay, well, this is expected of me. That's something I can check off the list. That mm-hmm. is, that is something that I can do to meet these goals that, you know, I may not have for myself, but society has for myself. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's something right yeah um, yeah so I, th- I think that's kind of where my brain was at that time i mean like mm-hmm. don't get me wrong i love my life but yeah it's it's, it's just things hopefully are changing for mm-hmm. like the the younger generation like i see it all the time with my sister-in-law mm-hmm. like she went to school for what she wanted to do right mm-hmm. like she's mm-hmm. studying theater and she's gonna like she's just so jazzed about it and that's like awful. when she talks about what she's doing and what she's stunning it's the same feeling that i get when i'm out on a boat teaching divers or like talking Uh, about making lifeguards and safety and all this mm -hmm. other stuff like and it's just really cool to see people in that younger generation Mm -hmm. not giving in to expectations yes um which is just it's cool like i'm excited for them yeah Yeah. and and it's difficult when you're in between gener or I guess yeah, in between generations. Like I, I would hope like all of our kids it would be a little different. I right. Would assume. Yeah. But I'm sure there'll be their own problems or whatever that we oppress them with. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. Every, all- everyone's got <laughs> Yeah, there's yeah. always something. But it's um it's just hard to kind of it's almost like face your parents or face whoever and be yeah. like, No, this is I don't think what you're saying is true. I think what I need is this. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a big thing. To be unapologetically yourself mm-hmm. is the the biggest challenge like every day to just be like, yeah, this is me, this is, you know. Exactly. And so many people, I think that's where like the sadness or the people feel lonely and they feel sad because they don't get to be the fully themselves or they don't like themselves. Yeah. And they don't know how to how to be themselves right. or be who they like. Right. It's the whole thing. I've been diving into that a lot over the past year, really. Yeah, so, COVID's been good for that. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's that's <laughs> my wild. therapist has been on speed dial. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's I mean, great. <laughs> that, I mean, that's amazing. I, yeah, I wish I had a therapist. I can't spend the money on one right now, but I think it would be very interesting. Because yeah. I'm definitely. I don't. Are you like a think? I don't like to say I'm an overthinker, but I think a lot. Yeah, I get in my head a lot. Yeah, yeah. Would you call it an overthinker? Or would you just say you're a thinker? I think I'm an overthinker. Overthinker, I have a tendency to like make plans. Mm -hmm. And so like I'll I'll, like, I like my brain is constantly like 
going. Like mm-hmm. gears are turning, plans are being made, like lists are made in my head. Like I know exactly yeah. when I want to do <laughs> things where, and you know, if stuff doesn't happen that way, at least before I started working for myself, like, mm-hmm. it would really, it would really throw a kink. Yeah. Um, and like how I felt and my day mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, so like even, so for this podcast, for example, did yeah, you yeah. already think about things that you're like, okay, I need to say this, I need to say this, what if he doesn't say this, what if he say this? Or have you worked, like is it conversations like that on that basis? Uh, not necessarily that, That's but just kind of okay. like. I More mean, of like plan. Yeah, just planning. Yeah. Like I'm a, I'm a um, I don't know if you're into like personality things, but like yeah, being the psychologist yeah. I am, or yeah, you know, the psych sure. background person that I am, I'm like super into um, like personality tests and mm-hmm. whatever. So um, I'm an, e- an ENFJ on the Myers Briggs. So that Oof, is the. I did that the other day. Uh, I can't yeah. remember what it is though. <laughs> but in the, in the, the Enneagram stuff mm-hmm. is like really big right now. And mm-hmm. I'm a type three. So I'm extremely goal oriented mm-hmm. and I like to check things off the list. So mm-hmm. like, um, you know, the best thing for like the, the one of the best feelings in the world is like going through a list, like a packing list, mm-hmm. even yeah. like going through a list and like seeing everything checked off. That's just like awesome. Yeah. Um, that is a good feeling. I'm yeah. Sure. It's a great feeling. Yeah. And 2020 has been really hard for that because mm-hmm. like I can't, 